welcome to Trinity. We're going to be starting from the back. That's why you hear me, but you don't see me. Here I am uh, with our confirmation class. Uh, a few quick notes before we begin. If you have a moment, um, please check in that you're here with us on the app. Let us know that you're joining us on this celebratory Sunday. Um, this is the last six of our confirmation class. Uh, three of them were confirmed at our early service. Um, so this morning, uh, we're going to process in um, here at Trinity uh, when, for the special occasions when we process in. Um, we ask that the congregation, as you're singing this opening song, would turn and face the cross as you sing and then follow it as it goes to the front. Same applies to our exit. Um, Mr. Dozy here has volunteered uh, to carry the cross for us. We have lots of other things going on. Those things will be shown on the screen immediately following the service. Also, all of those things are in our email blast and in our bulletin. So please check those out. We won't have any further announcements. We're going to begin with songs. So as we are able, we rise. We're going to begin with our opening song, Death <coughs> Was Arrested. <coughs> Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope, no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested Have 
That's when death was a rest And my life began Today we're celebrating that the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been intimately involved in the formation of these six young Christians. That, that the will of God the Father, the hands of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit has been shaping and forming their minds, their hearts, and their souls. That today they may stand and confess that Jesus Christ, the crucified, the King of Easter, is indeed their Savior. So it's good that we begin that we begin in the triune name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's speak together our need for Jesus this morning. Heavenly Father, forgive us, O oh God, for the times we have failed to see ourselves through your eyes. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the times we refuse to see others through your eyes. Forgive us for the moments we have ignored your voice, demanding to dictate our own direction. In so doing, ultimately, we have withheld your love from those who need it. By your Holy Spirit to fulfill the mission you have set before us. Help us to fully embrace that we are loved, not because of what we do, but because of who you are. And from this place of security, send us out to love and serve those around us with the same love we have received. And prepare our hearts to receive your absolution, help us to ponder the depth of your love and the breadth of your calling. May we walk forth transformed by your grace, emboldened to declare your love and live out your purpose in our daily lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's my honor to stand before you, to stand with you this morning, and to let you know again the good news, the best news the world has ever heard, that it shall be done for you as you believe, that your sins, all of your sins, every single last one of your sins, they are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's share the love of Jesus with those around us. Seated above, throned in the Father's love, destined to die, poured out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. Suffered as if he
seated as we hear our readings. The scripture reading for today is Colossians 1, 15 through 23. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and, him, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless, above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from hope of the gospel that you have heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Pray to you, O Lord. Then he, Jesus, said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you 
while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. May the grace, mercy, and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be multiplied unto all of you, and especially to you six, our confirmation students. Amen. You may be seated. All right, here we are. It's Confirmation Sunday. You guys have your speeches ready, but they already gave them. So it's so good to be here with you if you're visiting with us here at Trinity. Um, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you worshiping Jesus here with us. We're in the middle of our series, Loved and Sent, and, and the series was picked for this time of year on purpose. We have Confirmation Sunday. Uh, many of us will be celebrating uh, graduations as well. It's a time of new life and new growth, and so it fits that uh, we would be having a message series about identity and purpose loved and sent who we are for all six of you. This is a moment you've been spending two years hanging out Wednesday night after Wednesday night, learning more and more about every detail of theology that shows you that you have known for years, but you haven't known in all of its breadth and depth that you are loved more than you could possibly imagine. And you have a purpose that's deeper and wider than you've ever known. This morning, the rest of you will be collateral uh, hearers. Hopefully, you won't be collateral damage. Uh, but this morning, I'm talking to these six. I, I pray that you would listen in, that you would hear too, that, that what is true for them is also true for you, um, and that this message of Jesus' love is for you. Can we get my mic turned down just a little bit? All right. Who you are and why you matter. Mr. Dozy, he, he volunteered to be our Christopher. You can stay there. Don't worry, we're not to that point yet. So he, he carried the cross in for us. Uh, and Mr. Dozy, along with Cash and Ava and Charlie and Lawson and Mr. Schwartz, have been journeying two years, growing more and more into who they are, exploring the depth of, of God's love for them and how he's worked it out. You guys, God has worked out for you years in advance the depth of his love. Every moment of his life is lived for you. And we've been been growing more into this truth, fully exploring his love and his belovedness that he gives you in Holy Communion. And baptism, all, all places where he declares who you are. The creed, his whole life story for you. All of the journey of confirmation from the Lord's Prayer to the Ten Commandments has been about God establishing that you are loved, who you are. And today is that that turning point, that axis of sorts, which you will become a full-fledged member of our church here at Trinity. When you're going to work with the other members here at Trinity on the mission, the purpose of the church is yours. So we're going to explore this a little bit more. Today as we culminate our confirmation journey, it it bears in mind that we should answer the question, yes, Jesus loves me, but how? Many of the adults in this room can bear witness that they've been through some sort of moment 
like you guys are living through right now? The answer is quick. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the tells me so. So that stuck. Good. Good. You all passed the first test. But there's, there's times, and there's going to be times, there's going to be opportunities in your life when you're going to be, we're going to be faced with two alternative decisions, and, and you're going to be in the middle of that decision, and you're going to realize that whether you make a decision to your left or the decision to your right, that you're going to hurt other people, that the easy path does not exist. And in those moments... You're going to wonder why you've been brought to this moment and where is the voice of Jesus in this moment and how do you love everybody that you have in your life at that moment appropriately and you're going to be left wondering. And in those moments of wonder, in those moments of hardship, the cross, the empty tomb, they're going to feel 2,000 years ago, they're going to feel like they happened thousands of miles away from you. And they did. So how? How does Jesus love you today? How does he love you in the days of your lives and the challenges you face and the successes that you celebrate? So we're going we're gonna to roll through that this morning. I'm going to need, uh, Charlie, what is that a picture of? Baby Jesus, and where is he? In the stable, yeah, in the manger, right? Okay, Charlie, you're still on, okay? We're going to confirm you this morning. You passed. The rest of the students are wondering what the next pictures are going to be of. Just kidding. The manger, Jesus shows up. The first gift he gives to you, the first answer that he supplies to you is, is how does Jesus love me right now, is that he gives you his presence. And, and friends, there's, there's many stories and many religions that will talk about gods and, and a plethora of gods or one god. And they're going to give you many stories. But, but our story in Jesus and his establishing for you the depth and breadth of his love for you is first shown to you in his presence. Yes, God showed up on a few mountains. Yes, God told them to not come too close, but he did all of that knowing that there would be a day that he came so close that he wasn't just touchable, that he, the Messiah of the world, was held in Mary's arms. That he was held in his disciples' arms as they pulled him off the cross. That Jesus did not choose to come close to you, he came all the way to you. How does Jesus love you? First and foremost, he established this as a, right away, he chooses to be with you. He does not remain apart from you. And, and we're going to use, in a couple of these slides, we're going to use what is known as the Christ hymn. And, and as we study the scriptures, we find that this this first section of the letter to the Colossians, uh, he, uh, in this first chapter, uses what, what has to be an ancient poem or an ancient hymn of sorts. And so that would mean that, that these words have been used in moments like this for almost 2,000 years. Hundreds and hundreds of years, Christians have been finding their answer to the question, how does Jesus love me in this part of Scripture? Today... We're going to focus in our answer for his presence in these two sections, that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, that he is the one through his birth that gives life to all of creation, and that God, in Jesus, he didn't send just a special human. It says, for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. So there's two words I want to focus on. First, the fullness of God. All that is God showed up. The full glory of the deity of God shows up in Jesus to be present with you. He holds nothing back. He doesn't send one of the pawns of the kingdom, a low-ranking angel, to give you a message that doesn't matter. He delivered to you a message of utmost importance. And he did it himself. 
The second one I want to have you look at is it says he was pleased to dwell with us. He was pleased to be present with you. Sometimes we do things begrudgingly. For me, there has not been one moment in my life that with pleasure I put on a tie. Not one moment. Every single picture you will ever see of me in a tie, I'm doing so begrudgingly. It's against my will. I'm doing it to make other people happy, not to make me happy. Maybe you've been there. Doing something that you do not enjoy for the pleasure of others. Jesus didn't come that way. He didn't show up and be like, hey guys, I'm so happy to be here because my dad made me be here. It says that Jesus showed up because he chose in joy to show up. His presence is a gift of his joy and he's pleased to be here. He's pleased to be present for you. All right, this one's a hard one. Uh, Cash, as you look at that picture, what is that a picture of? Yes, okay, good. Cash's family can relax. You will be confirmed. Whew, that was sketchy. Were you nervous? (laughs) Okay. I was nervous for you, because it's also a picture of the ocean. Right? <laughs> All right. So it would be one thing if he chose to be present, okay? But, but if he didn't also come with his pardon, then his presence would be fundamentally different. Even if he's happy to be with you, even if it's something he does enjoy and it's a pleasure for him to be with us, if he does not come with our pardon, then his presence with us would be tainted with sadness. Check out these words of scripture. It says, this includes you, who were once far away from God. You were his enemies. That's the way we're born. We've learned this, that Jesus comes to us, and and many times in holy baptism, he takes us who were enemies and washes us to make us his family, that we were there apart from God. Yet now, he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical bodies. So how do you know Jesus is loving you? It's because he didn't just show up to hang out with you for the parties and the good times and the celebrations and the victories. He showed up tailor fit for your bad days, for your weak days, for the days that are marked with tears and pain. He showed up with your pardon. And as a result, as a result of his pardon, of his blood purchase pardon, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy. I want, listen to these words. They're, they're not simple, wimpy words. You are holy. You are blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. You guys, he has made you to be the righteousness of God. His presence has brought his pardon so that you can have his presence always. How does Jesus love you? He showed up with his presence. He showed up with a pardon. And now we're going to bring it all the way home. Because Jesus, he may show up with a pardon. He can show up with his presence. But there's one last thing he must have. You see, these things build. His presence comes first. But then we want more. Because once we know the joy of being with Jesus, we want to make sure that we will always be with Jesus. So he brings his pardon. And the last step is the most crucial. Ava, what is that? The Hall family can rejoice. Ava will be confirmed. Many of you might be looking at your watch wondering if there's six parts to this sermon. (laughs) There's not. They've all passed. It's all good. The crown stands for power. 
You see, guys, if Jesus shows up and he's present with you and he brings his pleasure and his joy with you to show you that you are loved by God, and if he brings with him the very blood of his crucifixion that will make you to be the very righteousness of God, this shows you that he loves you. But if he doesn't have the authority to make it stick, if he doesn't have the authority to overcome all authority, then we have questions. But he has that authority. As we see here at the very end of what is known as the Christ hymn, he says, He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as the thrones and kingdoms, rulers and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. And friends, this is, this is what wraps it all up. This is the end of the anthem of Christ's love for you. Because you know that Jesus has the power over things that are seen and unseen, over the powers of death and over the powers of life. He has the power over your sins, the sins you know and the sins you don't quite understand. He has the power over all of it. And he uses his power to make sure that his pardon is enforced, to ensure that his presence with you will never be denied. His power, his pardon, his presence. Friends, all three of these come together on your Confirmation Sunday. From the manger to the cross and his crown. His presence is with you. His pardon is for you and his power is over you. It's right that we should have this reading at this moment. At the end of the gospel, at the end of his story with his disciples, he, he gathers them. And, and the two come together in this moment for you. The first part is your confirmation. This is what you've been studying. This is the truth that you have been growing and maturing into. That Jesus said, it has been written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. This is for you. This is the power, the presence, and the pardon that is yours. This is the love that you have received. And then here he continues. He continues with your purpose. He continues with his sending of you. Because Jesus doesn't just stop there. He says, it was also written. That this message would be proclaimed, that this message would be proclaimed by Grayson. That Lawson would speak this message into his family and his neighbors. That Charlie would be an ambassador of God, speaking of his presence and his power and his pardon. That Ava would bring good news of great joy wherever her feet would take her. That Cash, no matter which country he lives in, would be there a man speaking the truth of the gospel of Jesus. And that Mr. Dozy would be he who speaks the good news of great joy. That would be for all the world to hear. It says right here that you six would speak proclaiming the love of Jesus in the authority of his name to all the nations. Beginning from Trinity. That there is forgiveness. That there is the forgiveness of sins for all who repent. The six of you are witnesses to these things. May the working of God, may the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus be the anthem of your life. May you proclaim it now and always. You guys, all six of you, you are loved. You are sent. Let us pray. Jesus, your love is unlike any love we may find anywhere else. It's a love that far, that far exceeds our ability to comprehend it, but, but a love we see so plainly played out on page after page of Holy Scripture. And there we see that this love that, that God has is a love that would pursue us, 
a love that would insist on being present for us, a love that would bring with it the pardon for all of our sins, the love that would bring with it the power that was necessary to establish us as children of God Almighty and the purpose, the sending of us to the world. May we, all of us here gathered, join our voices with the voices of this confirmation class, and may we preach peace to a broken world. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. All right. Confirmants, stand up and come forward. Made it. We're here. Don't worry, no one's looking at you. <clears throat> Except for them, they're looking at you. It's a big moment. Jesus has been at work in your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit, and it's all been according to your Father in Heaven's plan. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have been intricately involved in your life to bring you to this moment. As I said earlier before service, we're going to answer these questions with the same volume and conviction that we want Jesus to name us before our Father who is in heaven. So let's pray. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Confirmands, you have been baptized and taught in the Christian faith as our Lord has commanded. And Jesus said, he said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Therefore, lift up your hearts to God, the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Confirmands, do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. In my baptism, Jesus washed away all my sins. Do you reject the devil, all his works and all his ways? Do you hold all the holy scriptures to be the word of God written, given for our salvation? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in what you say, do, and think to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Amen. Let's stand as we are able, and we will join with them and speak the story of our salvation using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, a holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations, guys. Let me pray for you. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous teachings. 
that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, we pray that you would strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort in Jesus, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life everlasting. This we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, guys, we will continue with our blessings. You may sit down, and Mr. Dozy, please remain up front. All right, Mr. Dozy, you know these people, right? Sure? All right. Mr. Dozy, Emmett Russell Dozy. Emmett, from John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Emmett, the Lord has given you a passion for his truth, the truth that will set the world free. And you have matured in that truth by the working of the Holy Spirit in your heart and in your mind. May you use this truth for the good of others. May the truth of Jesus empower you to make an impact on the lives of your neighbors. May the truth of Jesus convict you when you are in the wrong. And may the truth of Jesus liberate you now and forever with his grace. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Hug mom. Congratulations. All right, have a seat with your family. Cash, you're next. All right, Cash, go ahead and kneel down. Your family's going to gather around you. All right. Cash, Bo Hadley. Cash, from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Cash, Jesus has woven into your heart uh, the, the strength to pursue what you love with passion. And you embrace the joy of hard work and a good challenge. As you strive, we pray that you would strive hard. And as you do, may the way of Jesus be your guide. May his love forever be your security. May you commend yourself, body and soul, to his will. For it is all that is excellent and good. The worship and praise that God desires is that your life would be lived as a living sacrifice. And your worship of him would be service to others. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Congratulations. Hug mom. All right. Congratulations, Cash. Next up, Miss Hall. All right, go ahead, Ava, kneel down. Ava Kirsten Hall. Ava, from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, 
I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Ava, may the living Christ be your greatest joy. May the life he has poured into you take you places that you would never have dreamed of going. May his sacrifice be the bedrock of your life, of your daily life. And may it be the constant inspiration that pushes back the horizons of your journey. You journey with Jesus. May the gospel of Christ be the light to your path. Amen. Congratulations. Charlie. I should have prepared stories to tell all about all the confirmation students during this time. Maybe done a slideshow of embarrassing pictures. How does that sound? Good. Next time. All right. Come on down. We got room over here. All right. Go ahead and kneel down. Charlie Ray Hansen. Charlie, from John chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Charlie, the will of God is made complete in your restoration. Your Heavenly Father loves you so much that he entrusted your salvation to no one else besides Jesus, the Christ. He, who has accomplished so much for you, will sustain you in all of your needs for this life and the next. He will sustain you. He will give you drink, and you will never thirst again. This is the will of your Father in heaven that you would be his, and so you are. Amen. Congratulations, Charlie. You guys just kept the clapping going on your own. That was amazing. Mr. Heiser, come on down. Gather around, lay a hand on the young man. Lawson, you can go ahead and kneel. Lawson Trace Heiser. Lawson from Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Lawson, Christ has made you his own. He claimed you. He holds fast to you. He makes you new by the blood of his cross and therefore sustains you. He is your strength, your hope, your today, your tomorrow, even your yesterday. As you press on, do it by drawing upon the strength of the Lord. You will be tempted to use your own strength, the strength of this world or even the strength of others, but they will all fail you. As you press on, do it with the strength of Christ, for he is yours. Amen. Congratulations, Lawson. Go find mom. Give her a hug. All right, Grayson, come to the front. Yeah, 
All right. Oh, buddy. Grayson Parker Schwartz. Grayson, from 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. Grayson, now, right here, the word of God, Jesus, guarantees the reality and promises that you are a child of God. Your current situation will never supersede the cross. Your voice points to the best day of our lives, the return of Jesus and the glory that he will bring for his servants. May that day and the power of Christ that will overwhelm you then be your beacon of hope that will lead you, inspire you, challenge you, and comfort you. Grayson Schwartz, beloved Son of God, you are the light of the world. You are his beacon of hope. Amen. Congratulations, Grayson. We will continue uh, taking some time to worship God with our tithes and offerings. Gracious Heavenly Father, today we gather in your house. We gather here to celebrate 
that you have given us so many gifts, gifts that will show us again and again that you love us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for winning the pardon for us. And we thank you, Jesus, for bringing your power, that by your power and your power alone, we would be called children of God. Lord, we thank you for the work you've done in the life of Emmett, in the life of Cash and Ava, Charlie, Lawson, and Grayson. Heavenly Father, it is only by your working that we are made to be the righteousness of God. Sustain us in all times. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we, we are all aware that there are people in our lives who are suffering from, from different sicknesses and health challenges. Lord, we name them in our hearts. And we also ask for you to be with Clayton, Sandra, Kevin, Walter, Sandra, Diane, Emmy, Dan, Cindy, Neil, and Claudia. Lord, we also lift before you the families of Clifford, James, Doris, and Ron as they mourn the passing of their loved one. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, uh, you've been at work in the hearts and the minds of our confirmation students for two years, forming and shaping them, showing them again and again the depth and the breadth of your love, that they are the beloved of the Lord. And Heavenly Father, now you've laid before them none other than the very purpose of the kingdom of heaven, the mission of Jesus. So Lord, we pray that the growth you have given would continue to blossom into many good works, works that would show the world the love of Jesus, that they would be your ambassadors of peace. Do this, Lord, through them and through us all. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place and the peace that we have here. We thank you for those who serve us in our military and those who serve us in, in the many different government offices. Lord, we pray that all public servants would pursue their position with responsibility and integrity, that they would uh, use their position to take care of those who are weak and to look, look out for those who are hurting. Lord, in your mercy... It was, it was right before your ascension, Jesus, as you, you shared with us again all that we'd, we would need to know that we are loved by God, and you sent them, and you send us today. You're continually sending your people to a broken world with good news. We pray, Lord, that you would continue this work among us. It's right, Lord, that we should celebrate Holy Communion on this great day. For it's there that you give to us the very body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of all of our sins. As we prepare to celebrate this meal this morning, it's good and right that we should pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our trespasses, as we trust in those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, it was on the night when Jesus was betrayed, as he reclined with his disciples, celebrating the Passover feast, that Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Then in the same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This cup is the new Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you may be seated. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given into death for the forgiveness 
of all of your sins. Take and eat the body of Christ given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. You stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before.
the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender all I am is yours. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender all I am is yours.
And now may this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, strengthen you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Friends, receive his blessing. At Jesus' ascension, it actually tells us that he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And in Jesus' day, you only did that if you were saying these words. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his very countenance unto you that he may give you now and forever his peace. Amen. How about we give one more round of applause for these confirmants. And I forgot to ask for this at the early service, but our confirmation program relies on so many volunteers. Uh, and so we, we need to thank those who made the cake, those who were confirmation mentors, our high school students, Mr. Gideon, and all the parents that helped out. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and now we should sing Amazing Grace.
peace and praise the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is amazing grace. 